Uh, first of all, let's understand the WP query. Uh, in database, you have to fetch some information from uh, in WordPress, you have to fetch some information from database. We use WP query class. It is a PHP query class, a PHP class, and it helps us to perform complex database queries in a safe, simple, and modular manner so that our code stays clean, optimized, and secure. And it can be uh, created by initiating the WP query class. So uh, if we have this PHP, we can, uh, there's a way to initiate, uh, w, there's a way to initiate class by, uh, in order to create the object. In the same way, we can use this class by initiating the WP query class. And it has several properties and methods so that it helps us create flexible and large amount of uh, ways to optimize and uh, perform our database queries and it also performs last number of parameter options to perform the queries. So that is the basic introduction about WP query. So let's see an example. Uh, here is the basic example of a WP query. This is how we are fetching the data. Initially we are creating the array in order to uh, provide all the arguments for the WP query and then with the new WP query uh, Class, we are for, uh, we are uh, passing the argument there as a out variable. So this is how we are generating our updating uh, our WP query class. But can we improve this? Even though this is the default uh, simple query, but is there a way to improve this query? Yes, there are several ways. We will see through those uh, techniques and ideas how we can improve this. Okay. When we uh, use the WP query class, by default, all the things are valid. But we have to only paste the things that we only need. We don't need to paste the things that are not required in our uh, task. So how we can run the query that we only need? So that is the confusion. So dog is also confused here. Okay. By default, WP query makes five queries, and it calculates generation queries. And it also pays uh, post data and taxonomy terms uh, data and it calculates results. So there are a number of couple of queries it does by default. But we may not need all, all those things at the same time. So we have to uh, specify the thing that we really need and exclude the thing that we don't need. We can improve it by passing some parameters and techniques. We will discuss about them one by one. Okay, uh, when we don't really need the pagination, what we need to do is uh, we need to pass no found rows as true. So, what this does is this is a uh, parameter in the WP query, and we pass it, we uh, insert this as an error argument in our uh, query class. And when we pass this parameter, what happens is it prevents the pagination uh, queries within the uh, from the database. So when you need specific number of posts that pagination, it is used, uh, it is useful to use this undocumented parameter as a true value. This will increase our performance. And next thing is when we really don't need the post meta information, then we can set this uh, update, po update post meta cache parameter to false. And in this uh, with this that with this uh, parameter, with this technique. We, we exclude the, all the post data information and it gets in our performance. And next thing is similar. Similar to the post meta, it is different. Uh, it is post term now. So when we pass this update post term cache to the false, it will exclude all the information from the post term. Post term means if you have, uh, I think it is, if you have used the uh, what is it is a taxonomy. So here we are referencing the taxonomy with the post term. So if we need to uh, exclude all the information from the taxonomies, then we can pass this uh, parameter in our argument and it will help in our performance. But uh, of this object, uh, let's go object post term cache and object post meta cache are not required if there is main cache enabled in your environment by default. So you only need, you need to pass this information if there is no main cache in your, in your server. 
Okay, next thing is this is really important thing. Even in a small environment, in a, even in an intermediate or small environment, if you test the benchmark with this uh, parameter, you will notice big difference. So this is a field parameter, and in this parameter we define what data we need. If we provide the field as all, it will retrieve all the information from the back end. But if, if we pass this field as IDs, it will only face the IDs of the WordPress post. That means less information is fetched from the database, and when we pass less, uh, less information, that means our query will be passed. But if we pass field as all, all of information, all of objects will be fetched from the database, then it will be heavy. Remember, these things are uh, if, you test, if you test the benchmark of these things, these things are highly noticeable in the last database system. In a small database system, you may not notice the big difference. Okay, you can see the car crash there because some things were done wrong. So, in the same way, if you pass uh, post power page as minus one, it will catch all the posts from your database. That means it will catch your site. Imagine there are millions of posts in your WordPress system. And you pass this value as minus one, and it will crash your site in a busy environment, even in a normal environment as well. So, another thing is we have to avoid post not in. Uh, the reason for post not in, to avoid the post not in, because is because uh, it does additional database queries as well. It is even though it, it is helpful in a small environment, but in a big environment, it can lead to poor performance and. A poor performance and even crash the site. Uh, if you want to give the detail information about this, there is the link. Uh, I can uh, pass. I can provide this link later if you want to interest. If you are interested to read this in detail. And what is the alternative for uh, techniques for post notting? By the way, post notting is uh, used if you, if you need to exclude any of the post uh, in our query. And what's the alternative technique? First of all, let's see the default way or basic way. This is how we generally pass the post not in parameter argument in our query. Or we, or we pass the array, that array are the IDs of the post. This is the default way. But what's the alternative technique? Let's see the alternative technique. Um, so let's see the code from line, first line. In, in the beginning, uh, there is a variable of the post ID to exclude, which is the array. And then these 2, 5, 12, 14, 20 are the post IDs. And let's create a WordPress query, a W query. And we have, uh, I have assigned the variable as optimized post list. In this array, I have passed the post type as job listing and post for page as the, uh, I have passed as 50 plus count of the post IDs, array, post IDs to explode variable. So it's total is 55 so post for page is 55 and then you can see the loop starts and if you see just above the dot title function there's uh, we check the in array we check the uh, post id using in array function so if the post id is post id is to exclude uh, uh, item includes in that includes in that loop then we uh, we ex we Continue with the next iteration. iteration. So that is how we are uh, uh, doing things in the server instead of doing things and checking things from the database. Okay, next thing is uh, do not use WPDB and get post unless you have a solid reason. In some cases, you really need the WPDB and get post to use, but if you are uh, using a basic query, if you are making a basic query, it's better to avoid them. Uh, I suggest avoiding WPDB for security reason. If you misuse this, if you do not properly use it, there will be security issue. And for the get post functions, uh, under the hood, the get post function also uses WP query. And some of the arguments may be limited. Some of the param parameters may not work within the get post. So that's why if it is already using WP query uh, class inside that function, then we can directly use the uh, WP query because it is more flexible. And when you are working in the large database system, you may see a lot of solo queries. And the easiest way to detect the solo query is using query monitor plugin. If you go to the WP plugin site, plugin page, and source the query monitor plugin and install in your environment, then you will see the uh, 
top menu for this plugin and when you visit every page you will see the uh, reports of the queries from that plugin so it's a really helpful plugin utilize transient feature when possible so first of all let's understand what what is transient in wordpress we store the cache in wp option database table also providing the expiry date so this is basically like storing the cache in our database and it also by in the normal uh, data in the wp option table there is no expiry date but in this uh, transient feature we provide the expiry date as well so Whenever it is possible to use the transient, please use transient in your WP query. But make sure you are using it really well, really organized and really um, secure way. If, you use, if, you, if, if it is used in a wrong way, you may not see the changes that are happening in your query. And this is really a cool thing. Uh, provide a way to override. Suppose you are making a plugin or product theme, whatever you are making. Provide a way. Provide a way is a uh, to override the default behavior of the plugin or theme, whatever it is, by creating the custom hook like this. So we, are, I have there is a hook called um, plugin query ox. So this is um, in the second last line. So this is created using apply filter functions. So this is way. This is how we can over uh, uh, override or change the uh, arguments uh, value. So it is if if you provide like this your if you have a product and if you provide like this your developers your users will thank you because they don't need to directly edit the theme or plugin they just uh, override things using their own way own theme child theme whatever it is and we can use wp query for the source and filter as well so let's see it so there's a way to pass the source parameter for text source. So we just provide the S parameter as the N to pass the keyword value. This is the basic way. But in a WordPress, there is a big issue. The issue is default in search engine for the WordPress searches only the title and the post content. So this is the default behavior of the WordPress search engine. So suppose if we need to search the post author or um, taxonomy information or post meta information, then we have to extend it. The way to extend is using an extension plugin or library, whatever it is. The easiest way to use is relevancy plugin in integration. So you can see there, I have passed the relevancy as true. I have passed this argument there. So when you do that, uh, relevancy is integrated. Relevancy is a plugin. You can source that in the WordPress or plugin page. And this is how we are integrating it. And after that, it will also so you can define a lot of source uh, logics and include a lot of different information within the uh, source operation. And if we, uh, this is relevancy is only for the text source. But what, what if we need to uh, so, uh, uh, add our add the filters in your do, in the WP query? I mean, source and filter things that is happening on the WP query. Then we can use the um, facets plugin like source and filter pro plus relevancy combination. So this is my favorite con combinations. And in WordPress 6.1, um, there, is, there is big change in WP query improvements. So if the database query is run more than once, the same result would load it from the cache. So um, if you like to explore more about this, we can have a chat later, or uh, you can see check, check the WordPress org page about WordPress 6.1 updates, and you will see lots of information about this. And final point. Um, the thing is, even the, all the mm, mm, techniques I have explained here may not be um, possible to use every time, because you have to really understand your requirement and implement it accordingly. Some, in some cases, you need separate ideas, and you, in some cases, you need separate ideas. That's why understand your requirement really well and implement the techniques that you can optimize your query. That's all.